Profiling provides a more accurate output because it optimizes the printer for your specific combination of ink, paper, and printer settings. The process simply entails printing a target that represents the range of colors your printer can achieve, measuring them with your device, and letting the software calculate a custom ICC profile. In the next few minutes, I'll demonstrate how easy it is with i1 Profiler. Select Basic User Mode, and i1 Profiler will walk you through a simplified workflow to create your printer profile. Click the Printer Profiling button. You can see the help menu on the left to guide you through the process. Simply roll over the section you need help with and it will appear. You'll see a workflow diagram at the bottom of this window. These are the steps you'll be performing to create a new printer profile. This pull-down shows the printers installed on your computer. I've selected an RGB printer, as you can see by the red, green, and blue icons. On the right side is the profiling target for this setup. If you select a CMYK printer, you'll see a different profile target. Next, select the paper size you have loaded in the printer and the size of the test chart that you want to use. A large test chart size may give you more accuracy, but will also require more paper and more measurement time. The preview shows the format for the target and the number of pages that will be printed. Click the Print button. The Print dialog box will open. If it is closed like this, click the arrow to expand it. Print drivers for different printers on both the Mac and Windows will look a little different. However, the process is basically the same. We'll look at an example driver. Some of the terms used in your driver may differ, and you'll need to refer to the printer's documentation for terminology used in their driver. First, select the paper size to match the size you selected earlier. Next, under Color Matching, make sure your printer driver is taking control. I'm using an Epson printer, and you can see it says Epson Color Control. Printers from other companies may say Vendor Matching, or even something else. Whatever the case, select whichever option your printer provides, but do not select Color Sync. Next, select the type of paper that most closely matches what you're working with. Select the mode and print speed that you'll use for production. High speed will print in both directions. Now, turn off all color management. This setting can be different in different printer drivers, so you'll need to check with your printer documentation to find the correct way to do this. All of these settings are very important and will affect the color. And be sure to use these exact settings when you print using this ICC profile in the future. When you're all done, click Print. After the target has printed and is dry, click the Next button. It's time to measure. If you're using an i1 Pro or an i1 I.O., you will be prompted to calibrate. Place the device on its white tile and click the Calibrate button. Device Ready means that the calibration is complete. If you're using an i1 Isis, this process is automatic and you won't be prompted to calibrate. Use the device to measure each row of patches. The on-screen display will track your progress with a red box. As you complete each row of measurements, the preview will show the expected values in the upper left and the measured values in the lower right of each patch. When all rows are measured, a message will appear telling you the measurement was completed successfully. Click the right arrow to continue. The lighting step is optional. If you do nothing, the default standard D50 illumination will be used. Or if you know your prints will be viewed under a different lighting condition, you can select it from this list. If you'd like to select a specific daylight temperature, select it here and use the slider to make adjustments. You also have the option to measure your own lighting conditions if you have an i1 Pro that supports ambient light measurement. If you've already taken light measurements, they will show up in Saved Measurements. We'll select Measure to measure our ambient lighting conditions. Follow the instructions to calibrate the i1 Pro. This will require the ambient light head and its black cap. After the i1 Pro is calibrated, remove the black cap. Point the instrument with its white diffuser towards the light you want to measure and click the Measure button. The graph will change to show the energy distribution of the current lighting conditions. Click the Keep Measurement button to save this measurement. 
it will show up in the Illuminate measurement menu and can be used for this profile and others made in the future. To move to the next step, click the next arrow. Give the new profile a meaningful name, just as you did for your measurement data. On the Macintosh, you have the option to make the profile only available to you, or you can make it available to all users on the system. This feature isn't available on PCs. The Hot Folder menu can be used to select other locations on your computer to store profiles. To add a new location, click the plus button. Finally, to build the profile, click on Create and Save Profile. When the profile is complete, a three-dimensional graph will display the range of colors that were measured to build your profile. Use the left mouse button to rotate the view, the right button to move, and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To use the profile, you'll need to select it in your application's print dialog. And remember, be sure to select the same printer settings you used when you printed the profile target.